A space mission like this has never been done before. Nearly 20 years in the making, it's so precise that even a millimeter of error could ruin the whole thing. Two satellites are floating hundreds of miles above the Earth with one big goal – to create artificial solar eclipses on demand. This could change how we study the Sun forever. But pulling it off is insanely difficult. And let's just say, NASA and the ESA are holding their breath. Proba 3 has successfully launched and already shows promising results. It's made up of two satellites that will fly in perfect formation. Their goal is to block out the Sun in space. Well, why do we need that? Because solar eclipses are actually very useful for studying the Sun's corona, its glowing outer atmosphere. The Sun is obviously super bright, so its corona is only clearly visible during rare fleeting moments when the Moon perfectly covers the star during an eclipse. But what if we could recreate that effect any time? That's Proba 3's main task. One satellite acts as an occulter, a giant sun-blocking disk. It also carries a wide disk, about 5 feet wide, which acts like an artificial moon, blocking out the sun's light. The other is a coronagraph. It should capture detailed images of the corona. There's also a third device that should study space weather and how solar storms affect our planet. It's insane how perfectly precise they must be for this to work. They must stay perfectly aligned with their position shifting by no more than a single millimeter, about the thickness of a fingernail, all while they're floating high away from Earth in space with no strings attached. This project was a team effort and a pretty big historical moment. This is the first time that an ESA mission is launched from India since 2001. Proba 3 was built with contributions from 13 European countries, along with Canada. There was a small hiccup before departure, though. The air freight company refused to accept the satellites because their batteries were still inside. The engineers had to remove the batteries and ship them separately. Mm, not ideal, but a small price to pay for getting the mission to the launch pad. The idea first came to mind in 2005 to ESA scientists. And after years of planning, designing, and testing, the mission finally lifted off on December 5, 2024. For the first few weeks after launch, the two satellites stayed connected. Scientists run tests to ensure they were functioning properly. During this time, the coronagraph took its first-ever space image. It captured a beautiful star field in the Ophiuchus constellation. Then, on January 14, 2025, the real mission began. The two spacecraft successfully separated from each other. Over the following weeks, ESA's engineers carefully brought them back together to keep control distance. Now that they're in orbit, Proba 3's satellites work in a highly elliptical orbit, swinging between 372 and about 37,000 miles from Earth. This should help ease the Earth's gravitation, meaning the satellites won't need to burn as much fuel to stay perfectly aligned. The spacecraft also communicate with each other using lasers, adjusting their distances in real time. This level of control has never been attempted on this scale before. But the Proba 3 mission isn't only about looking at the Sun. The second satellite, the Occulter, has its own mission. It carries DARA an instrument that will measure the Sun's total energy output. This is incredibly important for climate studies. Scientists need to know how much solar energy reaches Earth. If Proba 3 succeeds, it'll prove that satellites can fly in space autonomously while staying super precise. This could open the door to entirely new types of space missions. For example, giant telescopes in space, where separate satellites act as one enormous lens or more advanced climate monitoring with precision instruments orbiting Earth together. Finally, deep space exploration. Spacecraft could team up to explore planets and moons in ways never seen before. 2025 is going to be full of insane space missions. It's packed with lunar landings, asteroid visits, and planetary flybys. But space is never easy. Missions get delayed, some never launch, and others surprise us. First, IMAP – Interstellar Mapping and Acceleration Probe. This one will launch in September, and it should help us unlock the secrets of interstellar space. Ooh. 
It will travel super far away to study the boundary between our solar system and interstellar space. This mission will help us learn more about cosmic rays, solar winds, and what happens when the Sun's influence stops and the actual terrifying space begins. Next, PUNCH and SPHEREX. These two were already launched on March 11, 2025. PUNCH will help predict solar storms before they hit Earth. It will track solar winds from the Sun to Earth and help us understand space weather better. Space weather is important because it can damage satellites and power grids. And SPHERE-X will map the entire sky in infrared light, capturing the spectra of millions of galaxies. It could reveal the secrets of how galaxies formed after the Big Bang. Next, we've got TON2, which should launch sometime in May. It will visit the legendary asteroid Kamaualiwa. Many years ago, this asteroid might have been a chunk of the Moon, and now it orbits the Sun. The next one is Escapade. Once again, two spacecraft, one Mars mission. Escapade should be launched somewhere during 2025. It will send two small spacecraft to Mars to study how the solar winds influence our red buddy. Many years ago, Mars used to be like early Earth. It had a thick atmosphere and liquid water. But it's now a dry, cold desert. Escapade will help us understand what exactly happened. How and why did Mars lose its atmosphere? 2025 will also be packed with lunar missions. Unfortunately, not all missions are going to be successful. For example, the IM-2 lunar lander reached the Moon's surface on March 6. It was supposed to land near the Moon's south pole to search for water ice. Finding water on the Moon would be incredibly important for our future human missions. If we find a method to turn this water ice into normal water, we'll be able to build entire settlements there. Well, IM-2 was marched on February 27th. It traveled to the Moon successfully and prepared for landing. It made it to the surface, but something went wrong. Communication was lost temporarily, and no one really knew why. When NASA re-established contact, they saw that the lander wasn't in the correct position. One of its two radio antennas wasn't working. Turns out, it landed sideways. And now solar panels can't generate enough power. And without power, the lander couldn't keep working. By March 7th, the battery was completely drained and the mission was over. But there are more plans. In late 2025, they should launch the Griffin lunar lander. The rover it will bring should explore the Nobile crater, a key target for future moon bases. In somewhere between 2025 and 2026, they want to try the IM-3 lunar mission. It's going to be a third lander with multiple science experiments. Now, what about the planets? NASA's Europa Clipper is currently headed to Jupiter's icy moon Europa. Scientists have suspicions that this place could have water. It might even become a place for future human missions. On March 1st, Europa Clipper flew by Mars and used its gravity to speed up. On August 31st, ESA's JUICE spacecraft, another one that aims at Jupiter's icy moons, will fly by Venus. They might even snap some pretty pictures along the way. Finally, Juno's mission nears its end. Since 2016, NASA's Juno spacecraft has been orbiting Jupiter. It gave us breathtaking images and crucial data. Now, it's running out of time. If all goes as planned, Juno will continue until September before being deliberately crashed into Jupiter to avoid contaminating its moons. All these missions are pushing the boundaries of human knowledge, and we're just getting started. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.